Okay. Let's say we have a head, and we want to add magnet catches to it. You think it's going to be really hard, but I promise it's not. So first thing you're going to want to do is you need to know what size your doll is going to be. This one's going to be, what, half the size of Cabot, so about 14 millimeters, or 14 centimeters tall? So, okay. So what we're going to do is we know that he's going to be smaller than Cabot. Um, and we need to find magnets that fit inside this small of a head. So we know he's tiny, and I'm going to just go to Amazon. I'm going to see what kind of tiny magnets I can purchase. Cabot uses 3mm by 8mm, so we're going to do something that's definitely at least half that size. Or, yeah, 3 by 8 So we can do a 4x2, a 3 by one I would not do 10. So I'm going to pick the 5 by one uh, and what I've done is you just go into Tinkercad. And you just make an account, and I just grab one of these, slap this down, <coughs> and then I say, I want this to be five millimeters. I'm gonna click on this little dot. Five millimeters. And then I want it one millimeter tall. Wow, we did it. We now have a magnet that is exactly those dimensions. And you're gonna go click export up here. You're gonna export it as an object or an SEO. I've already exported this, so I have one on my desktop, but you would just drag this to your desktop. I personally like to name them. So, one millimeter by five millimeter magnet. And then I save that, or I put it on my shop or in my Discord server for people to download so that they don't have to go through and make it. So, now that we've got that made. <coughs> are going to import it into ZBrush Core. <coughs> I don't use regular ZBrush because I'm cheap and broke and an artist and that's life and that's how it goes. So what you're going to do to import it, um, I duplicate any of the mesh, click Tool, Import, you go to where your item is, here's our disk magnet, bam. Now we can't, I have no idea where it is, okay it's down there. So we're going to click E to activate our gizmo. You can also just click over here. I'm going to center this to the object, this gizmo. This automatically centers it. And I'm going to home my magnet. So now it's it's home. It's in the middle of the axis, you know. The center of all 3D modeling. So what we're going to do is rotate it 90 degrees. And this is our magnet, so we need to make something larger than our magnet to hold it. So I'm going to duplicate my object. I'm going to go to inflate, and I'm going to just slap in, I don't know, 15? Nah, I want it bigger than that. And you know what? Before I do that, I'm going to turn it into a DynaMesh. I'm going to hide this. Now I'm going to go to deformation, inflate, let's try 20. Cool, that works for me. And it's okay that it's kind of janky and ugly looking. We'll fix that later. So we're going to move right there. And what I like to do is I'll hold control and drag, and I'll mask half of this object off. And I'm going to hit control I to invert my mask. You don't have to. You can pull the other way. And I'm just going to go and pull it up. I'm going to kind of line this up with my head. I want it just a smidge in so that it's not bumping up. Okay, that looks good. I'm going to mask by holding control and dragging. I'm going to... Oh, wait, I have to re the mesh. I'm going to hold control and drag out here. Now I'm going to mask this off. I'm going to go to split. Split masked. I'm going to delete this one. So now we have this guy, and we're going to hold control and drag to redynamish him. I'm going to transform and activate symmetry, and I'm going to just you know, make him a little cleaner. So he's not so janky. Okay. So now we have our magnet holder.
And then here's our magnet again. So I'm going to drag my magnet up. I'm going to put it right about where I want it. And I think that that still looks a little bit too close to the walls of the magnet. Because when we print it, it's going to be really tiny like this. And that wall thickness is just too thin. So I'm going to go back to my magnet holder. I'm going to inflate it again. We'll just do 20. Pull him back in. We're going to smooth this so that it doesn't poke out of the head. Let's turn it around. Okay, that's better. So, again, this is our magnet, and we need something larger than our magnet so our magnet fits in because it's going to shrink when we print this in resin. So I'm going to duplicate my magnet. I'm going to inflate this one by 15. Oh, I need to make sure it's a diamesh first, otherwise it gets a little bit messy. <coughs> there we go. And now we're going to Boolean cut this larger magnet guy that we've made out of this dude. And to do that in ZBrush Core, because ZBrush likes to hold all of the fun tools in full-blown ZBrush, that's 800 to 1,000 bucks, and I'm a cheap artist, and with only 200 bucks to my name, um, you're going to <coughs> make sure this is a Dynamesh. You're going to make sure your, your magnet holder is a Dynamesh. You're going to go and click on your magnet cutter, not the magnet, he's right here. He's too tiny. We want the bigger one that we made. You're going to make him a cutter object by clicking on this little option. I call it the little crescent moon man. Um, and I'm going to duplicate these just in case I mess up. Generally, you want to save before. So we'll actually save. <clears throat> before you do any kind of Boolean cutting. Because it takes a long time, and if you frick up and it crashes, you have to start over. So, we are going to take our magnet holder and put it above our cutter, and you're just going to click Merge Down. Now, once they're merged down, you can either click the Dynamesh button, or you can just click out here, holding Control and drag. But now we have it cut. I'm just going to smooth it just a smidge. So now, here's our magnet. I'll change it to red so that you can see it. And here's our magnet holder, because now we have a little bit of wall, or a little bit of, you know, extra space to wiggle that magnet in. Because again, when you print in resin, it shrinks. I can't remember the percentage, but you, you'll always want to make your magnet well bigger than your magnet. So, now we don't need those, we're going to hide those. Or you can delete them. I guess I'll just delete them. Cool, we got our magnet holder. What we're going to do now is... I want this guy to have more than one magnet holder because I find that having two <coughs> works better than having one. Makes it more secure. So I'm going to center this. Oh, I need to turn symmetry off and then recenter that. I'm going to hold shift and rotate this about 30 degrees. I'm going to put it about right there. I'm going to hold control and mask off this goopy goop because I don't want this poking through. I'm going to go to split, masked, and I'll delete that layer it created. I'm going to hold control and drag so that that is now again a dynamesh. And now we have a magnet on the left. Now we also want to make sure that the eye isn't in the way, so we're going to check that. Yeah, looks like it's easy for you to insert the eye in, in here. Wowzer Bowser. It's not in the way. So now I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to go to Deformation, click Mirror. And now we have two magnet holders. Now what I'm going to do is click on the upper one and go to Geometry, or Merge and Merge Down. We now have two magnet holders. Now we need to get our gizmo back to the center, so we're going to click that. I'm going to unlock it by clicking this unlock button, hold shift, and rotate it back so that it's, you know, up and down, 90 degrees. We're going to relock it. 
because we have the magnets on the front. Now we need to make them to the back, and we want them to line up. So what we're going to do here is we're going to duplicate our magnet. You're going to hold shift and just rotate it 180 degrees. Oh my goodness, I'm having a hard time here. 180 degrees. Now I'm just going to drag it about right there. Because when you, when you make these, you don't want them to be actually touching. You don't want them to touch, because that'll create a gap. You want there to be a gap between these, so about like that would be fine. So we're going to turn the head back on. Hide this magnet. And I'm going to just scoot this back a little bit more so that it's flush. There we go. We're just going to oops, turn on the symmetry and tug that up. And now we have our magnet holders. They have a slight gap. Because I'd rather, again, have a gap than have them touching each other too closely and pushing the face off of the head back. Because magnets will still work when they're just a little bit far away. So now I've got our two magnet holders. This one's the front. This one is the back. And I'm going to just fuse this faceplate that I've made to my front magnets. So we're going to go merge down, and we're going to click Dynamesh. Geometry, Dynamesh. And if you find that when you're Dynameshing your objects, they um, lose too much resolution. It's because um, this resolution is too low. Like, we don't want our face to look like this. That's that's way too blech. So we're going to pump it up to, you know, two, 280 works just fine. Because you want it to be as low as you can without, um, without making it too dense. Because when you go in and clean stuff up like this, it's easier if it's a lower resolution. Oh, we gotta turn symmetry back on. And this just has this weird lip here because I removed the magnet uh, that I had previously. Um, and now we're going to take the head back and we're going to merge it down onto the magnet back. Um, you can also you can click Dynamesh again, or you can control drag out in the gray area. Oh, that doesn't look like it went. Let's try again. Uh, it's a little bit low resolution. There we go. It's good enough for me. Okay. So what I like to do is, now these are basically done, I'm going to name it head back. And I like to include the name of the size magnet that it is. One millimeter by five millimeter magnet. Faceplate. Oops. One millimeter by five millimeter magnet. And then this is the eye. So we're going to save this, obviously. And when you're in ZBrush and you want to export something, it's better if you decimate your mesh. That way it's easier and faster for the computer to read. So what we're going to do is go to Decimation Master under Z Plugin and do 20K. And it's going to it's going to be thinking up here in the top left corner. And you don't, you don't want to touch anything while he's thinking. The more complex your mesh, the more brain power this bad boy is going to need. So, Okay, looks like it's done. It says reading GeoZ file, so that means it's done. We're going to go here and do 20k. Here he is thinking. This is what my brain does when I have to talk to people. Okay, now that one's done. And I'm going to do the same thing for this eye object, because I like to keep my eye spheres. And he's already done. So you can see that it made 
the face lower poly. And, you know, it kind of looks bad, but your 3D printer isn't going to actually print all these ridges. It'll be smooth when your printer gets it. And you want to make sure that you're doing, you know, the highest decimation I ever do is 35k. So I would just do 35 or 25k. If it looks too rough, you can do 75k, but just be aware that some 3D printing places like Shapeways won't accept any files that are that large, depending on your mesh. So now that we're done with this, we're going to export it. So you're going to go to Tool, Export. Um, and I like to export mine as an STL, and you're just going to save it. And a little pop-up menu is going to show up, you're just going to hit OK. Do I know what any of that does? No. Have I ever touched any of the settings? No. Did my stuff go just fine? Yes. So do I care? Not really. So there you go. Now you know how to make magnets. So if we were to bring him into, you know, my slicing software. He's on my desktop. Um, excuse me. can now print him. And we know what size magnets that he needs. And theoretically, he should go together just fine. There you go. Have fun. Be gay. Do crime as long as it's legal. <laughs>